Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's project, we're going to do a beginner uh, scrap wood project uh, without any any uh, four jaw chucks or anything like that. Just again, like the rest of the videos in the series, just the stuff you would have gotten when you got your lathe. So we're going to take a, a scrap piece of walnut, inch and three quarters thick by five and a half inches square, and we're going to make a key bowl or a change bowl. We're going to make a more stable version of the traditional key bowl or, or a change bowl, which is typically round with a small bottom, uh, which is a little bit unstable. So we're going to make one that's square. So what I've done is I've found my center, I've drawn a circle on it, which is the same size as my faceplate, my sacrificial block. So I'm just going to hot milk glue this around the outside edge. All the turning in this video is going to be done in real time, and uh, the little bit of sanding that you're going to get to see is done in two times speed with the lathe noise in. So we'll let that set up, and we'll put it on the lathe. Let's see what we can do. If you have this piece perfectly, the right thickness, and you get it mounted so that it's on here flat, you won't have to touch the bottoms of the corners. And, and the reason you, it's good to avoid that when you can is that sometimes you'll get a chip out. The grain on this piece runs this way, so when I'm turning this, I'm apt to get a chip out here. So if you can avoid having to touch those corners, then you don't have to worry about that chip out. Now this one's probably not right, so I'm going to have to touch my corners. See this walnut does not like to be cut that direction so I'm going to change my direction I'm going to cut inside out and just before anybody voices concerns about my sleeves on my smock uh, being close to the piece they actually aren't as close as they look and I am very cautious of that when I turn um, so that's not a danger anytime you turn a piece of square stock or a piece with stock that has voids in it you want to get your lathe speed up as high as you can safely um, it makes it much easier to cross that gap between air and wood. Okay, so that cut nice and clean on the corners. <clears throat> so now we're just going to hollow this inside down some. That's all we want to do to the bottom. We just want it to be concave, which it is. So I can see the gap through here. Okay, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is we're going to sand the concave side first. So I'm going to power sand this. Um, I'm going to sand from 120 to 600 and all surfaces get 120 to 600 uh, grit sanding. Uh, doing this in double time just with one grit to show you how long it takes to sand uh, if you get a decent finish off your tool. Now I'm going to take a board with some sandpaper and I'm going to hold it on here so that I sand these off nice and flat. So I sand the outside part last because the board uh, with the sandpaper won't get into the part I've already sanded on the inside so the coarser grits won't mark up my finished inside. And this is one grit in double time as well. So now we get a nice smooth bottom. All these four corners are, are all the same height. So now what we're going to do before we take it off is I know the diameter of my faceplate that I want to put this back on so I'm going to mark another circle on the bottom so that I can take my faceplate off and remount it and be exactly centered because we don't, we're going to leave the square on the top and we want our bowl to be in the center of the square. We're going to find our center spot, straight there. My diameter is two and three eighths inches, so I'm going to come out an inch and three sixteenths plus just a little bit so I'm sure that I can see my line. So I'm going to come out to here. Okay. 
just going to double check to make sure that I'm out far enough, which I am. Now you can take some de some rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol and you can dissolve that glue or you can partially turn it off, whichever you choose. I am going to partially turn it off. I'm just going to use this diamond point tool, which you can see I've been using to part off glue in the past. Okay, now we're good to go. We've got our circle here. We're going to go remount it. I'm going to do that off camera and bring it back when I'm putting it back on the lathe. Now the steadier you can hold your hand making this cut in, the less sanding you'll have to do, so that's uh, that's a bit of a trick. Now the other thing about this, again, this doesn't like being cut inside, uh, outside to inside, so you see I got some tear out on one, one corner here. So I'm going to try and pull cut that back and get rid of it. Tear out's gone. Now I'm just going to shape this. I'm actually going to start out by turning a little bit of the inside out first. Turn this face because it's a little bit of a true. Now I'm just going to bring this back, I'm going to cut from inside to outside just to clean these tool marks up. All right, so now we're going to sand this up. Okay. 
So while I was sanding the inside, I decided to make a little design change here. And I'm going to take the outside of this down a little bit so it looks a little bit less like a square block of wood and a little bit more like a profile bowl on the top. So I'm just cutting some of the, some of the surface of the square part away to get a little bit higher uh, relief on the, the lip of the bowl itself. Okay, so the way that I like to sand these corners, you can do them by hand with the lathe off. I don't recommend you do them by hand with the lathe turning because there's a lot of air in here and, and it, you'll, you'll get banged up. You can use a board like I did on the bottom, uh, but even that's bouncy. So what I like to do is take a power drill and a um, little two inch disc. And if I'm turning it down, I will hold it out here and I'll tip it so that the, the sandpaper kind of skis without getting caught in so it just rubs off of it and you want to turn the RPM up fairly fast and then a couple turns a couple times that way and then reverse it and do the same thing with your drill tip the other direction and why I do that is because it's going to round the corners a little bit and if you don't do it both directions you'll get one side rounded over and the other side's still square so it gives us some uniformity um, and then I lock my lathe spindle when I'm finished all this and I just sand this outside the same grit as the rest of it. And you can do that by hand as well with a board and a piece of sandpaper on it to make sure you're laying nice and flat. Either or works fine to so get the lines all out of it because your planer, joiner, whatever finish you have on the outside of this probably isn't going to be as smooth as, it's not going to be as smooth as the rest of this. So uh, that's how I do that. So I've got this pretty well done now. I got one more um, sanding to do and I'll just show it to you here. So you see that the lathe is turning this way. I've got the We'll turn up. Don't push hard. If you're very careful, that works just fine. Now I do have to sand in around the outside of the turn part here. I'm gonna do that the same as I did the inside. But um, if you're not comfortable doing this, then shut your lathe down and lock your spindle and sand it by hand. I'm gonna take part of the glue off with my diamond tool again. <clears throat> you don't have to do this. You can take it off right off of the faceplate right on the lathe with some uh, rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol, but I'm gonna take part of it off. Okay, so I took a lot of this off by hand, but on half it's still on there. I just did that, I left that on there to show you how easily, just regular isopropyl alcohol. Once you get it started, it'll roll right up. Now we'll let that evaporate. This is just a second coat of Danish oil. Uh, just put it on with a paper towel. Usually I dump some in the center of the dish and spread it around to the rest. And I'll put about four coats on this. Um, leaves a nice finish. It's just clear Danish oil. Um, so if you're still with me, thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Thanks again to everyone who subscribes to the channel and watches my videos. I appreciate that a ton as well. I think in the next day or so, the channel's going to cross... Uh, 20,000 subscribers. Uh, never would have believed that. And I am very thankful uh, and grateful to everyone who does uh, watch my videos and subscribe. So thanks so much. 
And if you do like what you're seeing and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps a ton. I'll leave some pictures up at the end here and we'll see you next time.